can the interpreter uh, read the oath, please? And then, uh, Mr. Abdu, if you repeat it after the interpreter. <coughs> Yes, can the interpreter read the oath, please? I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Would you like to take a seat? Your name is Bilal Avdu. Oh, yes. When were you born? In 1947. And were you born in Rachak? Rachak. In Rachak. Do you live in Rachak? Oh, yes. Mr. Avdu, you gave a statement to the Office of the Prosecutor on the 30th of November in 1999. Do you remember? Oh, yes. And on the 28th of May 2002, you attend a meeting with an presiding office of this tribunal and uh, a copy of your statement in the Albanian language was read out to you. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. At that time, you had an opportunity to review and do you agree with the content of your testimony? Oh, yes. Prosecution submits the statement and the attachments into evidence. Yes, exhibit number. Prosecution exhibit 187 for the unredacted and 187A for the redacted version. As a, a clarification to the court, the, um, his statement has two attachments. <coughs> sorry, his statement has two attachments. Attachment A, the photographs that the witness provided, and where he shows uh, his house and several places in Rachak. And these photos are the same photos that are contained in the Rachak binder tab eight. And the the attachment uh, B is uh, photos of uh, vehicles that were identified by the witness. The summary, of, the summary of the witness testimony is the following. He's a Kosovar Albanian who is a survivor of the incident in the ravine in Rachak in the municipality of Stimuli on 15 January 1999. He states that towards the end of 1998, there were two attacks on Rachak by Serbian police who were positioned on the hills surrounding the village. There was no KLA presence at the village at that time. No one was killed during these offensives, but two civilians were injured and several houses were destroyed or damaged. The witness states that the police wore blue camouflage and plain blue uniforms and the VJ soldiers wore green uniforms with camouflage. The police and military vehicles, APCs and Pragas that the witness observed at the Chester Hill 
prior to and on the 15 January 1999 are identified on the attachment B of his statement. On 15 January 1999 at 7 in the morning, the witness woke to the sound of gunfire and explosions in the village. He realized that the village was being attacked and took shelter with his son uh, in Fahir, Faik Limani's barn. His son was shot in the left leg as he was entering the barn. There were five men there from the village, all of whom were unarmed and in civilian clothing. They all left the barn and went to Sadiq Osmani's house where they joined other men from the village. About 25 police arrived, took all the men out of the barn and searched them. Their ID cards were taken and the police commenced beating them with sticks and other instruments. They were cursed and, at, and threatened that they would be killed. VJ soldiers were also present. The men were all ordered to climb the hill to the ravine. When they got there to the ravine, the witness saw uniformed Serb police who shouted and cursed at them. The Serb police then opened fire on the men and killed them. The witness feigned death for about five hours in order to stay alive. He names the victims and survivors and checked some of the victims for signs of life. He spent the night in the forest with other survivors. The witness states that all the men in the ravine were civilians and were not wearing anything that could be mistaken for a uniform. Most were either young or elderly. No further questions. Yes, Mr. Blasovic. In your statement, you said that two offensive were carried out against Račak from the end of 98 until the 15th of January of 99. Can you tell me when did these offensives take place? At the end of the year 1998, this happened. The Serbian forces and the Serbian army, with the army, tried to enter the village. But there were no KLA soldiers. And they didn't. And was there an attack on the village before the end of 98? They came in and burnt the houses, about 65 houses. And there was no KLA, but they burnt the houses. This is what S Serbian forces and the police did. I'm asking you, please pay attention to what I'm asking you and reply only to that. Was there an attack on Račak before the end of 98? Was there one, for example, in the summer of 98? There was an attack, but I'm not sure of the date. Well, was there an attack in the summertime of 98? Oh, yes. Does that mean that that was the third attack? You said that there were two from the end of 98 until the 15th of January. So this other third attack took place before these other two. 
the witness may well be confused by that. <coughs> Mr. Uh, after you just tell us, if you would, how many attacks in all there were by the Serbs in 1998 and 1999? Twice in 1998, they attacked. And on the 15th of January, they entered the village and surrounded the village at night. And on the morning of the 15th at 7 o'clock, on both sides of the village, in the mosque neighborhood, all right. Well, I didn't ask you anything about that. So there were two attacks in 98. Is that right? So that's what he said. Yeah. When was the first attack in 98? I don't know exactly. I don't know what date. Was it spring, summer, fall, or winter? It was in the second part of the summer. And what happened during that first attack, about which you say that it was in the second part of the summer? Serbian forces attacked the village, the police, but they didn't enter the village. The second time, they did enter the village from both sides, and they burnt the houses. All right, well, I'm asking you about the first attack, the one that took place in the summer. So they didn't enter the village then, did they? Yeah. No, they didn't. Was somebody hurt in the village at that time? Was something destroyed or set on fire in the village on that occasion? Yes, there were fires in the village. But nobody was killed or wounded. So how come uh, there were fires if they didn't enter the village? I don't know the date. But on the first time, and then the second time they entered and they burned. They also, and first time and the second time, they did attack and they shelled from a distance. And then they entered and then they burned and then they got us, woke us from sleep. You said that during, as you call them, offensives, there were no members of the KLA in the village. There were only civilians there. Is that true? There were only civilians. So how come they didn't manage to enter? Serb forces into the village. You said that these offensives were unsuccessful. Who organized resistance from the village, resistance to the police and the army? They provoked us. The Serbian police Does that mean that they did not want to enter the village? 
They provoked us. They provoked us. They fired at us in the village. They fired from the distance but did not <coughs> enter the village. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes. Were there any victims on that occasion? Do you know of that? No. You. No. There were none in the village. And do you know whether there were victims on the side of the army and the police? Were any soldiers or policemen killed? No. Yeah. Did the residents of your village have some kind of a plan prepared in advance in case there should be an attack on the village? I don't know. There was no plan. Can you explain how is it possible that during those attacks and shellings, as you say, by the army and the police, there were no victims, none at all? I don't know. All right. Do you have any information or any idea about why did the army want to enter and take this undefended village of yours in which there was no presence of the KLA whatsoever? That, that is not for the witness to answer can't say why the army did something. Very well. Do you know where the place called Rance is located? Oh. Yes. How far is it from Rachak? Five kilometers. Were you there at the end of 98-99? I wasn't in Rantha. Do you know in Rachak that the KLA headquarters was located there? I don't know of uh, a headquarters being there. The, there was a headquarters with KLA people they were looking at the terrain. And at the end of 98, how mem many members of the KLA were present in Rajak <coughs> itself? I didn't hear it wasn't allowed to go to the headquarters. I went. Do you know what was the name of the KLA commander in Rachak? I don't know. 
Were they present in the village the entire time? Or they went back with other members of the KLA and went to uh, Rance or other places? They stayed for a short time. And they had their headquarters in Rance. And during their stay in Račak, regardless of the time period, did the members of the KLA have their own premises in which they uh, ate, um, slept, uh, had medical treatment, and so on? I wasn't at the headquarters. Were you in the hospital? Yeah. No. You. You can hospital. I wasn't in the hospital. Does this mean that you could meet members of the KLA only in the streets? I didn't see them. They watched the they watched the terrain, and I don't know who they were. I don't know their names. It 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 wasn't done to ask people who they were. Yes, very well. But you stated that out of those 30-something members of the KLA, 10 were your members or relatives. You should know at least names of your relatives and neighbors. There were no members of my family in the KLA. And about other people, I don't know who was in it. All right, but these people that you mentioned as being your neighbors or relatives, you do know them, don't you? I know them. Mm -hmm. They were civilians. Did the residents of Račak assist the members of the KLA, out of which these ten that you mentioned were your relatives and neighbors, did they assist them when they attacked on the army and the police? No, they didn't attack ever. Did any resident of the village have weapons except for the members of the KLA? No couples. They didn't. So nobody in the village had weapons except for the members of the KLA? Oh, that's right. In your statement, you said that the house of Fai Klimani was right next to yours. And then you go on to say that that is some 50 meters away. So is that the first house right next to yours? And how far away from yours is it exactly? The next door house is about 10 meters behind my house. 
A ne 50, je li tako? So it's not 50, is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Ajelo ova kuća Fajka Limanija 50 metara. And is the house of Fajka Limanija 50 meters from yours or is it the house that you say is 10 meters away from yours? We have only a path in between. And then the next house is not 10 meters away. Well, is it the house of Fai Klimani? Yes. Four. All right. When the attack on Račak started, you and your son started towards that house. Why did you do that? Four. Yes, that's right. The police and the Serbian army surrounded the village in the night and in the morning. There was there was firing from all signs with Pragas and tanks and armored vehicles, and they woke us up. And I went out into the yard, and the shooting was going on. Yes, I understand what you are saying. But my question is, why did you go to Faik Limani's house? You said it was only 10 meters away from yours. So what was there in the house of Faik Limani? There were four brothers and a sister uh, in the house, and I got, got them up and woke them up and took them there. I went to wake them up. It's now quarter two, and it's time to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Abdu, could you be back tomorrow morning to continue your evidence at nine o'clock? Could you remember not to speak to anybody about it until it's over? And that does include the members of the prosecution team. So could you be back, please, at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? We'll adjourn until then.